Hey guys, welcome to Ultimate Cry, crying out to many, all for the glory of one. Thanks for checking this out. I wanted to come back on and make a series that I promised, and this series is a three-part series on the 144,000, especially in the times that we're living in. It will be good to know about a powerful group that stands through the end time that we could potentially be a part of if we draw close to Christ. And so please let me know if you guys are hearing me. I'm going to have my um, comment section up so that I can make sure that you guys are actually hearing what I'm saying. And so as we go into this topic, let's just have a word of prayer as we commence. And I just pray that this message actually makes sense to each and every one of you. So with that, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll start. Father in heaven, give us wisdom and understanding as it concerns this topic. Illuminate our minds and draw us ever closer to Jesus. This is what we pray and we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I invite you guys to share this broadcast. Let others know about it. Um, and also get your Bibles. So we're going to be starting off this uh, series called The 144,000, Who, What, and Why. Firstly, who are they? That's what we'll be covering tonight. Secondly, in our next time we touch on the topic, we're going to be talking about at what time in history do they arise? And then thirdly, why do they arise? What is God's purpose in bringing this group into existence? So what are we talking about today? We're talking about the 144,000. Who are they? Who are the 144,000? I'm sure that you guys have heard of this group before. You probably studied it out in scripture and you're wondering who are they? And so as we go in our Bible, the first text that we'll go to is Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1. And we're going to see the first fact about the 144,000. Four facts we're going to cover this evening, but this is the first out of the four. The first fact is that the 144,000 in the two places that they are found in the book of Revelation, it mentions that they have something in their foreheads. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1, it mentions, Then I looked, and behold, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him one hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So what we want to understand, thank you guys for giving me that thumbs up. Just give me a more thumbs up if you guys can hear me clearly. I want to make sure that it's coming through as clear as it possibly can. So give some thumbs up and just let me know. So as we look at the topic, we're finding out that the first fact as it concerns the 144,000 is that they have the Father's name written in their foreheads. Now, as mentioned, I hope you have your Bibles with you. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 7. There are two places in Scripture where the 144,000 are mentioned. One is in Revelation chapter 14, the other is in Revelation chapter 7. And it states there in verse 3 and 4, verses 3 and 4, something amazing about the 144,000. So Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1 tells us that they have the Father's name in their foreheads. Revelation chapter 7, verses 3 and 4 tells us that they have something else there as well. It says in verses 3 and 4, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God, where? In their foreheads. Thanks, guys, for the thumbs up. I know you guys are hearing me now. Cool. All right. Praise the Lord. So they have the Father's name written in their foreheads, but now we're seeing about this group. How do we know it's the group? It says, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed and 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So what we're realizing here is that the 144,000 don't just have the Father's name in their foreheads. They have the very seal of God in their foreheads. What does that mean? What is that telling us? It's telling us that the Father's name and the seal of the Father or the seal of God 
is the same thing. The seal of God is the Father's name, and the Father's name is the seal of God. They're one in the same. Two different ways of saying the same thing. Now, what does that really mean to have the Father's name in their foreheads? Friends, this is crucial for us to understand in light of the times that we're living in and in light of what is soon to come upon the earth as an overwhelming surprise. The crisis ahead of us demands a character that can meet it and still maintain its fidelity. In the Bible, the name of an individual actually meant their mission or their character. For example, the name Jacob. Jacob, for the majority of his life, until he wrestled with the angel, his name was Jacob. And not by coincidence, the name Jacob actually means deceiver. It means heel biter, one who takes down from the feet. In other words, he goes low in order to take down. Jacob was a deceiver for the majority of his life until or for a good part of his life until he wrestled with the angel aka christ and his character was changed friends his character was transformed because he wrestled with the angel and prevailed not in that he won against christ physically but christ heard his prayer and answered it and so what does that tell us it tells us that the name of an individual represents that individual's character or mission Therefore, if the 144,000 have the Father's name written in their foreheads, this means that they have embraced and taken on the Father's character and his mission. The mission aspect is given in the very name Jesus. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, And his name shall be called Jesus. Why? For he shall save. His mission is to save his people from their sins. So what are we seeing here, friends? The 144,000 have the seal of God, aka the Father's name, his character of love, written in their very mind. And if it's in their mind, what can you expect about their lives? Their lives reveal the love of God. Friends, that's what we want at this time in Earth's history. In a time when the love of many is waxing cold, in a time of injustice and where the court systems, according to different writers, even throughout history and in our day, are corrupt. Friends, what the people of God need to manifest in their lives, and they can only manifest it as God dwells in their hearts, is they need to manifest his character of love. The 144,000, fact number one, they have the Father's character. They reveal His glory, His character, His love to the world. Now, as we go on, our second fact is this. The 144,000 were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. So that's Revelation chapter 14 and verse 4. These are the ones, or they, who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Now many try to read into this verse a literal perspective, that the 144,000 are literally virgins. But friends, no, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about in a spiritual sense as it relates to woman. The 144,000 remain undefiled by these women. So we have to understand, therefore, in Scripture, in regards to prophecy, what does a woman represent in Bible prophecy? And this is where we go in our Bibles to, the, to two books. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 16 and Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. So the first thing that we're going to go to is Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. So if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 2. And we're going to see something interesting here. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. It says, I have likened the daughter of Zion, meaning the people, the daughters within Zion, 
I have likened them unto a comely and delicate woman. The same idea is brought forth by Paul in the book of Ephesians, where he compares those who claim to follow God to a bride, to a woman. The church is compared to the bride of Christ. And so Isaiah chapter 51, that's our next text. Isaiah chapter 51 brings this out just a little more. Isaiah chapter 51 is what we're going to next. It states in Isaiah 51 and verse 16, And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, who's Zion? That it should be represented as a woman. Zion, thou art my people. So what are we seeing here, friends? The people of God are represented as a woman. So a church in Scripture is represented prophetic, in a prophetic sense, as a woman. So therefore, if, these, if the 144,000 are not defiled by women, which is a representation of, according to Scripture, a church, or churches in this case, that means that these women, to be defiled by them, if connection with them means to be defiled by them, it means that these churches have fallen from truth. They are teaching not truth, but error. They have fallen from the truth of God. And so therefore, for the 144,000 not to be defiled by these churches, it means it's not defiled by corrupted doctrines, by false doctrines. They remain pure, uncorrupted from doctrines that are not in harmony with Scripture. In other words, in doctrine and in mind and in life, this group is pure. In other words, they're not just pure mentally, they're not just pure intellectually or theologically to, to remain uncorrupt from false doctrines, but they also have the Father's name, right? Which means in their lives, they reflect the purity, the practical godliness of the character of God. And so those are the first two facts. One is that they have the Father's name written in their foreheads, and two is they were not defiled by false doctrines or by fallen churches. Now, number three is they follow. This is the reason that they remained undefiled or that they became undefiled. It is because, number three, fact number three, they are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. That's Revelation chapter 14 and verse 4. So as it concerns the 144,000, the reason that they remain uncorrupt, undefiled by the doctrines of fallen churches, the, the reason that they have the Father's name written in their foreheads, meaning the Father's character, is primarily because of this. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. <laughs> you see, friends, the only way that we can demonstrate in our life practical godliness the only way that we can remain uncorrupt from the world is if we follow the Lamb who overcame the world. And the only way that we can follow His example, because according to Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, or 1 through 5, the 144,000 are actually in heaven by this point. They've, they've been redeemed from the earth. But you see, the reason that they were able to follow the Lamb in the coming glory is, they be, is because they follow the Lamb here on earth. They are able to follow the Lamb there one day because they followed Him here today. Friends, the only way that we can follow Christ's example is if we have Christ's power. This is why daily we must pray and ask the Lord, Lord, give me your power. We must ask Jesus, give me the power to live a godly life, to live a life that reveals your love toward others, that reveals practical godliness. Friends, it is not a theoretical ascent to the truth alone that will save us. It is not just knowing the doctrines of Scripture that will result in our salvation. No, 
It is the practical demonstration of the scriptures that will lead to a life of salvation. The only way that we can have that is if we follow Jesus whithersoever he goes. Our final fact is this. Our final and fourth fact is this. They have no guile in their mouths. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 5 tells us, And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. It's interesting. Um, if you have your Bibles, go with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. This is a very interesting truth. How is it that no deceit comes forth out of their mouth? And even out of their lives, because they have upon their foreheads the very character of God, right? Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 6. And we're going to go to Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. And this is what it says there. Very interesting statement by Jesus. It says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So in other words, if the 144,000 have no deceit or guile coming forth from their lips, it tells us that they have a purified heart. There's no guile in their hearts. Their hearts are pure, therefore their words and their life is pure. And why is this? Because they're following the Lamb, by the Lamb's power. Friends, out of the four facts that we have just looked at, the major fact that we must ever keep in mind is that all three out of the four facts happen because of the third fact. And that is because they follow the Lamb. The 144,000, because they follow the Lamb, they don't follow false doctrines. Because they follow the Lamb, there is no deceit in their mouths. Because they follow the Lamb, they have the Father's name in their foreheads. For Jesus says, if ye have seen me, you've seen the Father. Friends, let us follow Christ today, asking him for the power to follow him. And as we follow him by his grace, friends, we will stand faithful in the end. And if God so wills, become a part of this group. Stay tuned for our second part in this series on the 144,000. Today we touched on who they are, but next we're going to touch on when they come into existence. And friends, you don't want to miss this because God is going to call this group to stand for him at a time that is like no other. As we see these things transpiring in the world today, friends, it tells us that something decisive is around the corner. And the only way that we can be prepared to meet that is if we follow the Lamb whithersoever He goes. With that, let's have a word of prayer as we close. Father, we have looked at four facts today, and I pray that these four facts made sense. I pray that as we go into the next part of our series and looking at not only who the 144,000 are, a little more about that, but also...